we've got one light trap set up right over there behind that tree on a photo cell and uh, there's pr there's private property no trespassing signs all over the place in the woods here so I'm not gonna push it with uh, the good folk of Levy County <laughs> my pops right new um, from the looks of their houses, they're not the kind of people you want to mess with. No, there's there's all kinds of very pleasant warning signs on their fences about what will happen if you were to enter their property. So uh, I'm going to keep it in a uh, public right away. There's a power line cut, and uh, we're just going to keep put two of the light traps in the power line cut. So I'm going to put it. I'm going to put a second one right here. All right, so this power line cut here is public right away. So it's kind of dry. A lot of deer tracks here. A lot of deer tracks. A lot of deer tracks. <laughs> okay. Is it dry enough for you to walk? Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, now this is going to be an experimental thing here. Um, these cans that I made with these wicks, what we're going to do is, this is ethyl acetate, and we're going to fill these jars up to the brim, and then the top of the wick we're gonna wet with the ethyl to get the actual wicking action going. Is it nice and wet? Yeah, okay. And then screw it in. And then it gets placed in the trap. Same thing with number two. So a couple things we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out uh, does do these wicks work? Because I this is the first ones I'm ever making myself. I think they will, just a sponge. Should, yeah. And we're gonna find out if it's enough ethyl acetate to last all night. There's no wind, so I think we'll be okay when there's a lot of wind. Uh when there's a lot of wind, the it, it the wind blows the ethyl and it makes it wick faster. So I think we'll be okay because there's absolutely no wind at all. So this thing here has got a little seal so when we put that down that helps keep it in and then this thing this this aluminum thing is pressed and sealed upside down and then basically the only place the ethyl can escape is the little hole right here where the moths enter the trap so There's no spring in this one. There's no spring? Oh, that means it fell off. There it is. <clears throat> that means... Okay. So... We've got our red, black, and voila. It is set up. Okay. Let's see how my wick system does. That's trap number two. Guys, uh, light trap placement is, you know, you want it to be in an area where there's some, some visibility. You don't want it be, to be too thick in the woods because if it's too deep in the woods, the, the trees block the light from being seen by a wider variety of moths. So we've got one on one side of this trail, one on this side of the trail to see how it goes. And uh, I don't know, we'll see. There's, there's a, quite a variety of different plants here. We've got willows, we've got cedars, 
we've got poplars we've got maples there's a lot of willow we got some pine uh that looks like a cherry tree so there's ah who knows who knows where we're gonna get springtime north florida um in a power line crossing we've got two more traps we're gonna put out and then we'll go join ricky to turn our lights on Trap number one. All right, this is what it looks like. This is from, from the initial view looks like the trap that we did the best on so can we just take this out get that here look at those bucket full moths there's not not a whole lot but it's something so definitely a little chilly last night um the chilliness didn't help with the amount of moths for sure um but er everything's dead which is good because i was worried about my new little wick system and if it would be putting off enough enough of the ethyl acetate and apparently it was so now it's just time to go through stuff and see what we find in our trap so the first thing i want to so show you is that we one. do have a katakla moth underwing moth that's a beauty. which is good that's do you did you see any underwing moths last night rick at the no, light no never, well, i've never seen one no <laughs> in my lights okay so there's a good one yes look forward to sticking a pin through him we got a hog sphinx and you know there's some notodonids we got a bunch of these uh these little tiger moths which are variable and we'll do a little mounting session on these guys show you the variability of the hind wings because they go they go from pink like this they can have pink hind wings and they can have yellow hind wings and everything in between yeah, so this one's like a hybrid. This one's got like pink and yellow. So we'll do a little, we'll have a little fun with that. We've got some of those. Um, we've got some of these. Uh, oh gosh, I for escaping me. Here's a little hook tip. Hook tip geometrid. Oh, geometrids are cool. Knock to it with the little yellow lines. Very scientific name. It's a neat little deltoid. Geo. No seams are starting to get bad. Okay, uh, we got geometrid. We got a uh, leaf leaf roller moth, uh, grape leaf roller. Skeletonizer, rather. Um, more of these. Big female tent caterpillar moth. And you know, one of the things you got to do is you got to kind of sift through 
and make sure that there's no hidden little gems that you miss because sometimes in the in the little uh, mess of mods that you have there can be things that are little surprises and you just got to be careful and you got to sift through a couple times to make sure you're not tossing uh, something that, that is actually really valuable so I like micro mods too especially when they catch my eye Okay, there's not, not a whole lot exciting. And I think this was the trap that did the best. So, all right, that's about all she wrote for trap number one. Oh, there's a little Arctia. Some of these yellow tortricids can be kind of cool. I'm gonna try and get a few of those. See if I can mount one of them without messing it up. <laughs> okay, the rest of it I'll, I'll put in a bag because I know some people that might like some of these beetles and uh, we'll call it a day for trap number one.